Knowing how to properly set up a booklet file in InDesign is very important if you're looking to save time. InDesign features some awesome editorial design tools to make it easier for you to design your own publication in a way that is cohesive, productive, and effective. Hi, my name is Laura Kyung from Envato Tats Plus. I have been working as a designer for over 14 years, and in this video, I will show you how to make a booklet in InDesign. Before we begin, make sure to check out Envato Elements. With one subscription, you will have unlimited access to assets such as booklet templates, fonts, and photos used in this tutorial. There are millions of creative digital assets with simple commercial licensing, and you can cancel anytime. You can subscribe with a link in the description. So let's get started. Once you have downloaded the assets and installed the fonts, we're ready to get started. In InDesign, go to create a new file and set the width to 8.5 inches, the height to 11 inches, the orientation to portrait, 12 pages, check the facing pages option, and then go down and set the margins to 0.75 inches and the bleed to 0.125. Make sure that you have make all settings the same here. Click on create. For this tutorial on making a print booklet template in InDesign, we'll work with different layers. So head over to the Layers panel, double-click on Layer 1, and rename it to Copy Front. Select the New Layer button to create a new layer, and rename this one to Images. Repeat. Rename this one to Background. And let's do one last layer. Copy Back. Let's just organize this a little bit better. That's perfect. And now we want to create some swatches. If you don't have the swatches panel open, head over to Window, Color, Swatches. Choose the new color swatch button from the main menu, double click, and set the value to 15, 35, 45, 0. Click OK. Add another swatch. This one set it to 35. 80, 80, 40. And the last swatch, 65, 70, 70, 75. Click OK. For this tutorial, we will create a list of paragraph styles that we will use to format parts of the design. If you don't have the paragraph styles open, head over to Window, Styles, Paragraph Styles. In the main menu, select Create a new paragraph style. Double click. Set the name to Title. Select Basic Character Formats. And here we can set everything for the style. Set the font to Bergen Text. Set the font style to Bold. Size to 30. Tracking to 25. Set the case to all caps. And then select character color. For this one, we will set the medium swatch. Create a new paragraph style and name this one deck. In the basic character format, we'll keep using Bergen text. The font style to regular. Size to 18. Tracking 25. The case normal and the character color, set the medium swatch. Create a new paragraph style, set the based on no paragraph style. This will ensure that we don't carry over any formats and set the name to copy. Here we want to change the size to nine, lighting to 12 and the tracking to 10. Select the indents and spacing option from the menu on the left. Set the space between paragraphs using same style to 0.1 inches. Select the character color option and set the color to the dark swatch. Click OK. Create a new paragraph style. Set the name to pull quote. Set the character format font style to bold. 
size to 20, lighting to 12, and leave tracking as 10. Set the paper character color. Create a new paragraph style. Set the name to folio page number based on no paragraph style. Font style to bold, size to eight points. Lighting to auto, tracking to 100, and the character color to the medium swatch. Add one more paragraph style, and this one will be named folio section. Set the basic character formats font style to regular, size to 420, leave tracking as 10, and the character color to the lighter swatch. Click OK. Let's add some guides. On the Pages panel, double click on A Master. Head over to Layout, Create Guides. In the option window, set the rows number to five and the gutter to zero. Set the columns number to eight and the gutter to 0.1875. Under options, select the fit guides to margins and click OK. On the layers panel, select the copy front layer. And using the text tool from the toolbar, create a text box under the bottom left corner margin. Right click on the text box and select insert special character markers current page number. You will see a letter A will represent the page number. And on the second line, you can add the title of your booklet. On the paragraph styles panel, select folio page number and you can double click to edit the style if you're not happy with it. So for instance, here we can change the letting. That looks better. Click OK. Duplicate this text box on the opposite side of the page. Select the paragraph formatting tool and set the text to align right. On the layers panel, select the background layer. And using the rectangle tool, create a small rectangle that measures 0.7 inches in width and 0.4 inches in height. Set the color to the medium swatch. Press Option and drag the element to duplicate it on the opposite page. Select the first page, press Shift Option and select all of the elements and delete them. Using the rectangle tool, create a shape on the top portion of the cover of your print booklet template. And while selecting the rectangle, press Command D to place the close-up of Coffee Seeds image. Select the image with the direct selection tool or A on your keyboard. And you can resize and move this. I want to resize this to about 20%. I want to duplicate this rectangle, pressing Option and dragging. I will delete the image with the direct selection tool and then set the color to the dark swatch. Change the opacity to 60%. I'll duplicate this rectangle and the opacity to 100%. And then using the line tool, create a line that goes across the width of the page. Set the color to the light swatch and to five points. On the layers panel, select the copy front layer. And using the text tool, add a title and a deck to the booklet. Set the size to 55 points, style to bold, letting to 50 points. Right click and select fill with placeholder text if you don't have real text yet. Set the font style to regular, letting to 21, and change the color to paper. Add a text box to fit the width of the page and place it over the bottom margin. While selecting the text box, press Command B to open the text frame options and set the number of columns to three and the gutter to 0.1875. Click OK. 
set the size to 10 points. Here you can add contact information. Set the color to paper. And lighting to about 4 or 5. So that's done and now we can move on to the interior pages. Create a rectangle that measures 10 inches by 11.25. Press Command D to place the image coffee cup with roasted beans. Using the direct selection tool, resize the image and try to fit it as best as you can. Let's move this layer up. Press Shift Command to activate the element and change the color to paper. On the opposite page, create a text box using the text tool. Place the box at the very top of the page. And here you can add a title and a tag. And use the paragraph styles to format these two. You can fill this with placeholder text as well. And again, you can keep editing the basic character formats. So for instance, here the lighting should be a little bit tighter. That works better. Create another text box with a text tool, and this is for the portion of the page. This is where the copy will be. Press Command B to open the text frame options window. Under columns, set the number of columns to 2 and the gutter to 0.1667. Right click, fill with placeholder text. Select all of the text, and using the paragraph styles panel, set it to copy. So now you have a great looking spread. All we're missing is the section number. So select the copy back layer, make sure that you lock the rest. And using the text tool, draw a text box. I'll add the section number. Using the Paragraph Styles panel, format the text box to the Folio section. And place the section number anywhere on the page where you see looks, it looks best. I think for me, it is going to be here. So now we can use this spread as a base for the rest of the inside pages. For pages four and five of the print booklet, we'll create a mirror layout of what we created on pages two and three. So select all of the elements on pages two and three, press Command C to copy, and then head over to pages four and five. Here you can press Shift Option Command V to paste in place. All of the elements will be pasted onto one layer, so it's best to move the elements to their respective layers so you can keep everything organized. So let's move the image to the right and then the rest of the elements to the left. And we can start editing with the right copy. So select the image, press Command D to place, and select all kinds of copy on spoons. Using the direct selection tool, you can move and rotate the image. I think this one looks best this way. And now we can add a pull quote. So create a text box, and while selecting the text box, press Command B. Here we will set the inset spacing to 0.375 on all sides. Click OK. And using the paragraph styles, set the, set the box to pull quote. And then we can place the text. I want the background to be the medium swatch. And here we will have to edit slightly. That looks better. Center everything. Let's add a name. I think the dark color fits better here. And then we can add the quotation marks. Let's edit the section and add the number two. Let's add a new title. And then to add a pull quote on the body copy created 
or duplicate the text box that we created on the opposite page. And open the text wrap panel by going to window text wrap. Here, select the wrap around bounding box. Settle the offset size to 0.125. Press Command B so we can get rid of the inset spacing. Set the background to paper and the font color to the medium swatch. And let's resize this slightly. For pages six and seven, we will create a resting spread. So that will give the reader a visual break. Using the rectangle tool, cover the spread with a rectangle. And press Shift Command and select some of the elements on the spread. We only want to leave the one on the bottom left. Create a new rectangle and press Command D. We will add the experienced barista image. And using the direct selection tool, we can resize it and position it to how we think it's best. Create another rectangle, and here we want to add the hot drink warm up image. We'll copy the pull quote from the other page. We'll add one on each page, and you can resize them and edit them. Pages eight and nine will have a different layout than the rest of the booklet, and this will be more of an interview style spread, so it is a good visual contrast to the rest of the layouts. I want to copy and paste the rectangle from the last spread. Press Shift Command to delete these elements. And I want to copy and paste the title and deck here. Change this to the lighter swatch. Let's get rid of the deck. Using the text tool, add a new text frame that fits four columns. We want it this way because we want to duplicate this specific text box after. Right click, fill with placeholder text. And using the paragraph styles panel, select body copy or copy. Select the first three or four words from the paragraph and make them all caps. This is a nice detail that lets the reader know when a new interview starts. Change the color to the medium swatch and set the style to bold. Create a one inch by one inch circle. Let's set it to white. And I just want to duplicate this text frame and edit it. So this is the name of the barista and some more information at the bottom. Select these three elements, press Option, and click and drag to duplicate. And we need four here. Press the profile image, the circle, press Command D, and you can start adding the images. And again, be sure to use the direct selection tool or A on your keyboard to resize them. For pages 10 and 11, we will go back to the initial layout and we want to copy and paste in place Shift Option Command V. Change the section number. And we can change the title as well. Let's get rid of the pull quote. Duplicate the text frame, option click and drag. I want to delete the text here. And on the original text frame, you will see a plus sign. That means that there is text that is not fitting into the text frame. So click on that. And then you will get a little link icon next to the mouse pointer. And you can click and click on the new text frame. 
So this text will continue on to the next frame. We need a little bit more of text here. We will add an image using the rectangle tool. Press Command D and select the barista at work in a coffee shop. And let's position this the best way possible. While selecting the image, go to the text wrap panel and select the wrap around bounding box. Set the offset to 0.125 inches. This will help with the text frame underneath. That looks great. And now we have the back cover. So using the rectangle tool, cover the back page. Press Command D and add the coffee beans image. Create another rectangle or duplicate this one. Select the dark swatch and set the tint to 60%. Head over to the cover. Select the contact information, press Command C and paste it to the back cover. And there you have it. You have a booklet in InDesign. To export the file, head over to File, Export. I will name this booklet. Set the format to Adobe PDF Print. Click Save. Set the Adobe PDF preset to press quality. Set pages to all and export as pages. Go to Marks and Bleed from the left side menu. Select all printer's marks and use document bleed setting. And now you're ready to export. And there you have it. In this tutorial, you'll learn awesome tools that will help you set up a multi-page InDesign template. These tools are effective and can make your time on the computer much more productive. Now it's your turn. If you like this video and would like to see more, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe if you aren't already. Don't forget to click the little bell icon to get notified of any new and inspiring videos. If you're looking to learn even more, why not check out some of the other excellent tutorials that Envato Tats Plus has to offer. My name is Laura Kyung and from all of us at Envato Tats Plus, thank you for watching and we'll see you next time.